Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Flipgrid community conversation. Tonight, the conversation is all about empowering readers. Hello, Feli, how are you? Hola, hola, bienvenidos a todos, bienvenidos a nuestra comunidad, nuestra charla comunitaria. Super happy to be here with you and this amazing conversation, like every Thursday, right? Uh, but we're going to be talking about empowering our readers, right? Empoderando nuestros lectores. Va a estar genial, va a estar fantástico. I'm super excited, Anne. Oh my gosh, Feli, I'm so excited too. And I know, I mean, I think back to my first grade classroom and I have a few things that, that I want to share tonight, but this is what it's all about tonight. We're talking about how we can empower our readers. And this is sort of a really fun preview to a super awesome event that is coming next week. Scholastic is hosting a Reading Gives You Superpowers Week. And Scholastic is one of our Flipgrid Discovery Library partners. So tonight we're welcoming two incredible educators who are participating in the event. And we'll talk a little bit about it. We're not giving away all the secrets about what's coming up, but <laughs> let's talk about empowering readers. I mentioned this is happening next week, but tonight we're welcoming in two incredible guests coming from different parts of the world, Feli. We're welcoming somebody from Canada and another somebody from Japan. So are you ready? you ready to say, hey, come on in? We're ready. I'm ready. All right. Well, well, first, I'd like to welcome Kathy King coming in from Canada to the conversation. Hi, Kathy. Hi. How are you? I'm great. It's end of the school day, sitting in my classroom, hanging out. Well, we're so glad you're here. Let's go ahead and welcome our other guest, and then I'm going to have you share a little bit about yourselves, all right? Um, coming from the future, tomorrow morning <laughs> over in Tokyo, Japan, is Scott Arnoldstein. Hello, Scott. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful to see you and meet all of you here today. Well, we are so excited, Kathy and Scott, to have you here. And Kathy, why don't you start us off? Can you tell us a little bit about... You know, I said you're in Canada, but what grade do you teach? And maybe what you love about reading or books or anything about empowering readers? So I teach grade four at uh, Spitzy Elementary School in High River, Alberta, Canada. It's a small-ish town south of Calgary, Alberta. Lots of people know about the Calgary Stampede. So I always say we're just south of Calgary a little bit. Um, I am obsessed with books and my students know that. They always say when I'm going to read them a book, you must love this book. And I always say, well, how can you tell? And they're like, well, you're hugging it. <laughs> and I have, I do have an obsession with books. And in my classroom, I have several shelving units full of books that I let my kids choose. And my rule is choose whatever book you want. Because if you're reading, you're reading. And if you want to read the back of a cereal box, bring it in and we'll read it. I love that. And that's celebrating like authentic reading lives. It's not always a book. Sometimes it's an advertisement or text in your environment. So that's so cool, Kathy. And I have a book right here that I love to hug my books too. <laughs> Scott, why don't you let us know a little bit about you? I'd love to hear more. Excellent. Well, um, my name is Scott Hernelstein and I am in Tokyo, Japan. It's 7.03 in the the morning. And um, so it's the beginning of my day, Kathy. And actually, today is the last day of school for my school year. So not only am I here in the morning, it's a, it's a very, very busy day for, uh, for, for our third graders here at uh, Chiyoda International School, Tokyo. That's the last day of school. I cannot believe it. What a celebration. Wow, Scott, thanks for being here on the last day before break. No problem. This is a lot of fun. And actually, my, my students have been really excited, uh, you know, about participating in these events. And they're really excited to, to see uh, the, the things coming up with Reading Gives You Superpowers. Um, well, so let's talk about that for a second. We mentioned that this is, I'm just going to have this ticker go across, a global 
celebration of reading. And so you both are participating in this, right? This event that's coming up next week. There is a special event that folks can register for if they head on over to aka.ms slash Flipgrid events. And I'm going to show that at the end when we're going through a few resources. But is there anything special you can you can give us a preview or a clue or what's coming up in that in that conversation about reading giving you superpowers? Well, in this conversation, we, I, for my part of it, we're going to talk about um, a new comic character that kids can create and learning how to create those facial expressions for different emotions on comic characters. We had a lot of fun in my classroom coming up with some different possible characters that could be added into our own comics. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, and um, and actually the the portion that uh, I'm working on and my students are working on is creativity. Um, one thing that uh, I really use to uh, help the students out in my class, especially since most of them are not uh, native English speakers, they're all we're all learning English and working with it every day. Um, is having, as you can see, my room is kind of a a, a hot mess of things and. Uh, Almost everything that you see back here was made by students on their own. Um, and so we kind of used and harnessed that creativity to uh, create a, um, again, some other characters, but using different forms of, of media. Um, and you can see this in a lot of books and things like that, um, making things out of clay, for example. So my students really got a chance to uh, take off with, with that part of their brain and uh, you know, the sky was the limit and they could come up with anything. Yes, I'm also an ESL, ESL teacher here in South Texas. And, and I love what you said, like creativity has no limits, right? It, it has no language. Like you can speak any language and you can be as creative as you want to. I love the, the activities where I had with my students just like uh, like Kathy said, right? You can read whatever you want, but we need to exercise the habit, right? Create a habit of reading. In my case, we will read in English, we will read in Spanish, and, and we had access to books in English and Spanish. And then from there, the creativity, like how my students were my not able to, uh, to have the entire main idea, but through creativity, through pictures, through drawing, to creating things, they were able to convey the message or to yeah. convey the learning that was happening in the classroom, right? It's, I, I love it. <laughs> I love being a teacher. And, well, and I, oh, I'm sorry, I was just gonna say, and actually to follow up on what you just said with, with pictures, that's actually a, a large part of Japanese culture. Manga is quite popular here. So a lot of my students don't start by reading a lot of chapter books and uh, you know books with no pictures. It's a lot of manga. And I know growing up that might not have been the, the most suitable thing to, to, to do, but what it really helps the students do is make connections between you know, what they see and the words and they can obviously connect that. So even if they don't know what a word means, they're able to make those connections. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you experienced that as well. Yeah. I love that thought, Scott. And I, I know I teased Kathy about like, I love to hug my books, but this is a, a graphic novel too, right? And I didn't read graphic novels as a kid. I think I only had, I don't know, maybe got into comics late in elementary school, but I've come back to a few graphic novels as an adult. Like this one is all about like women who've rocked the world, different things. And I love books. And, and I think that a lot of educators really love books and we know books give our students superpowers. And next week, Scholastic is focusing a ton of creative possibilities in this week-long celebration, things about creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, imagination, because that's what we experience as readers, right? So let's talk about reading. And I'm curious for the two of you, Kathy, if you maybe want to start and then Scott and Feli and I will jump in there. What kind of superpowers does reading provide you your students and your learning community. So I think when I think about reading and all of the doors that it opens up, whether it's a graphic novel, a comic book, a novel, a newspaper, anything that you're reading, this when we talk, we've talked about it in my class about when you open a book, that is 
a superpower. You're unlocking things so you can solve a mystery. Maybe you can save someone in the story that you're reading. And so I, for me, the superpower is that whole ability to unlock your imagination. And if it's a book without pictures, you get to create all of those pictures in your mind. And if it's a book with pictures, you're, it's almost like you're diving into the book and becoming part of the book. And so I always talk about how when we're reading a book, we're actually in the book. Everything that. else just goes away and you're in that book. You're living the life of that book. So your superpower for me is that you take on a role of a character from the book and it might not be the main character. Maybe you're taking on one of the other characters and kind of observing the world through that other character. And that critical thinking that you talked about, I think is so important for everything that we do. And I'll often say to the students, you know, step inside the role of something in the book. And maybe it's not a character. Maybe it's the character's hoodie. Hmm. Maybe it's something in the background. And what are they experiencing because of what's happening in the story? And so I think that um, when you're reading, you can actually do whatever you want when you're reading. You yeah. can become the character. You can become the background. You can become the narrator. And you can kind of control where you're going in your imagination with the story. I love that. I love that idea. And some of these quotes coming up about reading, you know, yeah, unlocking our imagination with the turn of every page. And I, I think about story elements and taking on character point of view and learning about the world around you and empathy and creative and figurative language because you can use any lesson, whether it's an illustration on a page, a word or a phrase, and that unlocks everything right well, like, sorry um we talked about how you can get lost in the book and my favorite thing it's not always great when we're trying to move on to something else is when the kids forget that i'm even here when they're reading and i go to say something and they're they're not even in the room with me they are off in whatever book that they're in and you know i just a little gentle tap on the shoulder to bring them back but they're they they look at you and go oh it was, it was freezing cold in my book and I'm freezing, but it's today in, in Alberta, it's nice and sunny and some of the kids were wearing shorts, but if they were reading a book and it was set in a storm or something, it's almost like they take on that feeling of, oh, the air's really cold in here, but it's not. And so that is like that whole imagination thing and just getting lost and being able to live the life of someone else in a book. You're right with that empathy piece. We have learned a lot in our class about understanding other people's feelings just from reading a book. Wow. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Scott, I'd love to hear some some of your insights about <clears throat> the superpowers reading provides. Sure. Um, so this might not sound like a superpower on the surface, but for my students, I really see that uh, reading kind of provides them with a uh, with an autopilot. Um, what, what happens is they uh, almost to, to follow up on what Kathy said there at the end, they get lost and they kind of forget where they are. For my students, once we start opening some books and especially something that they enjoy, they get started with it. And I sit back, other teachers walk in that they say, well, what are you doing? Well, the kids are, are really into this book. They're creating another story. They're making characters somewhere back here. They're making characters for their stories. I don't have to ask them to, to do those things. So really it creates inspiration um, for them. It, it really, uh, you know, op again, I, I keep saying opens up their creativity, but, but it really puts them in a, a mode to uh, just go into more reading, more topics. They make amazing connections between things. And uh, I really like also how they're able to find something in one book hmm. and actually they connect it to something else uh, in one of, I believe it was a uh, cat kid comic club. One of the uh, stories talks about the mother getting some cheese out of the refrigerator and she then cut the cheese. Well, my students had brought that up before and we connected it. So now every time we bring up something about cutting the cheese, they always come back to these books and, and I don't have to bring those things up. They do it on their own. And uh, it, it's really magic uh, to see that. And as a teacher, 
when the when you don't have to really push the kids to do the reading and they can do it on their own and take the initiative and have that agency to do that, um, that's really special. And I consider that to be a superpower. I love that. I love that. Feli, I'm curious about you to hop into the conversation. I want to hear about your take on reading as as like a, a spark and ignite igniting of that superpowers within. I love what everything that you that you all said. And also I would like to add like the perspectives, right? Like how kids are able to see life, to see things, to see events, cultures from different perspectives. Like I would tell my students, okay, so now we're gonna look at these events from the book from the protagonist, right? The protagonista, la, 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 la vision del protagonista. Now we're gonna move into the antagonist and we are going to analyze the reason why he or she or they're acting the way that they're acting, right? Mm -hmm. and, and how kids, that critical thinking that happens, right? Which is very, uh, very important language acquisition and how, how you can bring the other three language domains into reading. Like I will, I will have my students we will act the book out. We will find a dance, like come up with dances to describe the story or the event in the book. Pictures, oh my God, verdad? Muchísimas, muchísimo dibujos y muchísimas maneras that kids are able to show what they're thinking and what they're learning from the book. Another thing that my kids will really, really appreciate is how books take you to places that you might not be able to travel to yet. And that was, uh, that 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 stole my heart all the time, man. Like my babies were always my students, my babies were always looking for ways to yep. visit places that at that specific moment we were not able to go to. Yeah, and I think Feli, that resonates with me too. I taught first grade, so with my young scholars, I wanted them, Scott, you mentioned this at the start, whether it was through through illustrations or pictures or acquiring that language and, and, and experiencing that, I think reading, unlocking the infinite potential of imagination is like the superpower I wanna focus on right now, but making those connections. We talked about, you know, like text to self, text to world, text to media, different ways that you can learn from mm -hmm. and, and grow from a reading experience. And Feli, what you just said about visiting the world, literally books bring the world to life at our fingertips. So that, that these, there's so many superpowers. I think this conversation could go on forever because we could keep ident identifying another superpower. <laughs> and from a, from a middle school teacher perspective, like I will tell my kids, I, I want you to read everything. I'm not gonna tell you what to read because I was the kid I grew up in Mexico, so I was the kid like, don't, please don't tell me what to read. I want to read everything, not only what's maybe uh, needed for that specific class. So I grew up with that mentality because I always said that I was going to be a teacher. I am going to give, it's not, it's about giving choice to our students, right? Especially in middle school because comics are very popular in middle school. So taking advantage of that, I, is this okay? I don't ask me for permission, mi corazón. You read whatever you want. And in a bilingual classroom, we had the, I guess, I and it was just a plus in my case because we were reading even more because we were reading in English and then we were reading in Spanish. So we were visiting places in English y también visitamos lugares en español. It's, it's I love just that. The, an extra superpower. <laughs> Well, I love that. So, so talking about superpowers kind of leads us into another another question. And Kathy and Scott, I'd love a little bit more insight, maybe on what's something you love. Like, how how do you empower your readers, or what's something special from your classroom or learning community that that you love to do? A strategy, an idea, a best practice, anything that that you want to share? Um. Well, I I wanted to. Uh, say something on what uh, Feli just said there on having the students act out something. And I think that that's, uh, that's really important. We're really uh, working on reading with expression. And uh, there's one book where there was a, a bully and, and he said, uh, I'll catch you later. Squidney is the name. And the students were never able to fully grasp that. So what we did was we took turns acting it out in front of the class and to see their friends um, 
you know, put on a different pair of shoes and go up into the front and do something they hadn't done before and all say it in a different way from reading the same two or three sentences. They really, really enjoyed that. Mm. And um, it, it, again, it kind of made it, well, it made it more realistic for them so they could imagine the, the situation that's going on. Um, one other thing that I like to do is sometimes I'll just sit in the classroom and open up a book and the kids will come by, whoa, whoa, what are you reading? What is that? What? Oh, is that about this? And yeah, I, I, I try to read the, the books that are, you know, popular right now. But uh, in, in Japan, um, actually, uh, Phil, you're in, you're in Texas. I know that there's the Blue Bonnet Award, I believe. At least it may, might still be there. Uh, in Japan, we've got the Sakura Medal Award. And so every year there's the Sakura Medal Award program. And so I'll just sit up at the front of the classroom with this book and the kids see it and they end up being hot, you know, hot sellers at, at the library the, the next day. So that's one way I really try to get them um, involved with uh, the books and the reading at our school. Nice. Scott, I just have to shout out. I'm, I'm sure Sue must be a colleague, but she says everybody knows your classroom characters. <laughs> Sue, I love this. Um, but but even even like taking on that persona and using a funny voice, the imagination that's sparked from that can kind of ripple into so many so many things, right? And really truly impact teaching. But make it fun, making it fun, right? I think we all want our students to develop a love of reading and know mm -hmm. reading is an adventure. Let's think of it as fun. Definitely. One of the things that I do, like when you talked about them acting it out, um, I like when I'm reading to them and I, I we talked about this today, how when there's a day that we've had interruptions or lots of things happening and I don't get a chance to read to them. My day doesn't feel complete. Hmm. And it, I, I leave here going, Oh, something just didn't feel right about today. And lots of times I look back and go, oh, I didn't get to read it out loud to them. And so hmm. something that I try to do to empower them is to have fun when I'm reading out loud to them, I'll use different voices for the different characters. We just finished a novel a few weeks ago, um, Poppy by Avi. And I had different voices for all the different animals. And I'd stop reading because, oh my goodness, the bell's gonna ring and I have to get you on the buses. And they were like, no, they're shouting at, they're shouting, no, 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 just one more sentence. Wait till right to when the bell rings. We'll get our stuff on really fast. We'll make it to the buses. Or we'll be, I'll be reading to them and I'll think, oh, oh, we need to be eating right now. We don't have bells for our different times because we've staggered our recesses with the pandemic, but and I, oh my goodness, it's eating. we need to be eating and I'll keep reading while they're eating sometimes, but they're just, you can see them leaning in and when the book finished, they were like, that's it. And so that feeling when you finish a book that you love, that kind of, oh, then they're excited to find another new book. And so just showing them lots of different books, some that are popular right now, but some that I remember reading as a kid and they love that when I was like, this is my favorite book from when I was in grade two and it's a picture book. And, and they think it's hilarious because it's so far removed from their world and getting them to write, read with different voices. And we do something called flashlight Friday. Oh, fun. Turn off all the lights, turn off all the computer stuff, pull my blinds down. Sometimes they'll tilt their chairs down and they'll lay underneath their desks and they yeah. each have a little flashlight. Um, and they'll read by flashlights and I'll sometimes I'll give them something a little extra to do. And I'm like, okay, when you're reading today, use your flashlights to be a detective and find some really good, strong verbs that really, you know, those action words that really make you get into the story. And they they love it. They're like, oh, is it flashlight Friday today? Can we read? Can we read in the dark? That's like the wonder and joy and adventure that that learning is, right? And you're making that come to life for them in such a fun, easy, creative way. And it has my mind my mind spinning. Feli, I'm going to pop up this next question because I know you and I have had so many conversations from our own classroom, our days as teachers and coaches. But Kathy and Scott, I'm so curious. And it's okay to say no, just so you know. Um, but I'm curious if you've used Flipgrid to support your readers. You're talking about 
all of these creative things you're doing to empower your students as authentic readers, celebrating that journey. And I'm curious if you've used Flipgrid to have them share, to support them, and if you have any ideas or examples from your community that you could share. So something, we do um, a poem every, sometimes it's, it's every week, sometimes it's every other week, and just really getting them to work on the expression of that poem and they practice it and practice it and then they, they get to videotape it and so then they can hear themselves a little bit on that. Um, something else I did last year, we did a, a unit on sounds. And so they created a little paragraph, but then, oh, there goes the lights in my classroom. <laughs> <laughs> they got to create a sound story. And so they oh. wrote a paragraph. And then they also, along with while they were reading it on camera, they added sounds, they would made instruments and they had to add sounds to go with their story. And they just, they had a lot of fun. And the nice thing about Flipgrid is being able to pause it. So if you need to pause, you can pause. And because on so many other things, if you're just doing it on your phone and you hit stop, it stops yeah. it. And you have to put it back together. So I, they, and they love the backgrounds and adding emojis and all sorts of things into their, to their video to make whatever they're saying come to life. I love that. I love that. Endless possibilities for creation. I, you just, a whole sound story, like, oh my gosh, my mind, my mind is literally going with so many new ideas. <laughs> Scott, how about you? Do you have any examples or ideas or best practices? So uh, I'll be honest, uh, it, for us in grade three, um, if, uh, if I, you know, bombard my students with several kinds of technology all at once, it can almost be too much. Um, so uh, I had used Flipgrid earlier this year uh, personally and just to show things to the, the students, introduce the, the teachers. However, um, in the last month, we've really um, experimented a lot more with it. And I got to say that it's, it's really, um, it's really user friendly. And what we've been doing is kind of like uh, the reading rainbow style where the students do a, um, uh, a quick short book review and if I had used Flipgrid earlier in the year and used the mixtape function, we could have made a mixtape of all their different book reviews um, to, to kind of add them all in one place and ha instead of having, you know, going to each student's individual page. And so I see a lot of uses for it. And I'm definitely going to be using it a lot more uh, moving forward, especially as uh, Kathy said, a lot of those extra features like, putting on cat ears and things like that. Uh, yeah, they really enjoy playing with that. But really for me as, as an educator, making sure that all those things are together where the kids can then go to one spot and see all of their work and they can hear the different um, you know perspectives on what they felt about this book. Uh, I think that can be a great use for, for Flipgrid there. I love that. I love that. Sorry, something that I noticed too. I fell into Flipgrid last year when we shut down and I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> and I just learned along with the kids and they would try things. And I had students that weren't comfortable being on camera and having other people see them. So I said, well, put an emoji up or put something in or have a stuffed animal and you're just in the background. And it really brought out the creativity in all of the students in different ways. Like some students that were more shy presenting in the classroom, it was easier for them to be behind the camera in Flipgrid because it, then it was a video that they were sharing and it wasn't them right out in front of everybody. So I think it opened up a lot of doors for students that were maybe in the past reluctant to be up in front of a group mm. of kids. I love that. And opening doors of possibilities helping students gain confidence and find their voice. Kathy, I just have to share this comment about, you know, the great fortune of having you teach their child, making a writer, a reader, engaging students, and fun ideas like Flashlight Friday. This part of it, my kids never wanted to miss a day. That just warms a teacher's heart when students are excited to come to school, right? I think that's something we we all know and agree on. Um, Belly, I'm gonna share my screen, but I wanna go ahead and 
take a moment, Kathy and Scott, we mentioned as we got started tonight, something super awesome is coming next week. It is Scholastics Reading Gives You Superpowers Week. And I'm actually going to do a quick screen share. And Scott, come back there. I'll, I'll remove that. There you are. Um, friends, on the Scholastic website, you can go in and find this information. This is all, you know, Dave Pilkey, who we love and adore as a creator, an author, comic illustrator, celebrating this week-long event. Um, and you all are participating in this awesome, awesome global mm -hmm. classroom event on Monday, March 22. You can go to the Scholastic page and register. You can also go right to our aka.ms slash Flipgrid events page. And if you want to register for an adventure, it's right there on the screen. But friends, I want to take a moment and go into the Discovery Library. Kathy and Scott Belly, you all know this is this exists, but I want to make sure all of the folks tuning in know about this as well. Friends, when you go inside of the Flipgrid Discovery Library, you can click right on that Discovery tab at the top. And when you scroll to our partner pages, if you go into the partners, you have incredible ready to use topics right at your fingertips. But I'm gonna scroll down to this icon we all know and recognize with Scholastic. And when you click on it, you will go right to the Scholastic partner page. One of the features they have is this Reading Gives You Superpowers collection. So Kathy, you mentioned some creative elements um, that your students are practicing and creating. Scott, I know you talk about um, all kinds of creative ways to, to use books to, to maybe inspire your students as writers as well. But Dave Pilkey on Monday is gonna be teaching us all how to draw comics, right? So I wanted to point out this, create your own comic character. Belly, do you wanna talk about what a topic is and how easy it is for folks to, to add this to their own community? Yes, my friend, definitely. So once we are inside of our discovery library and we look into the topic and we design, this is the best one. On the left-hand side of the topic, we're gonna be able to see uh, the, the topic, the question, the prompt that is going to be asked for our students, the activity that they are going to be working on, and also the attachments, right? The extra, the scaffolding that we're going to be providing for our students. On the right hand side of it, those are our notes, us as teachers. That's basically the lesson planning for that specific topic, right? Totally amazing, right? It's just, it's beautiful. It's ready, it's free, it's ready for you to just to click, save it to your collection. Let's say that you're planning for next week and you're like, this is the perfect topic for next week, but right now I'm not, I don't wanna I don't wanna share it with my kids, my babies, my students yet. So I can create my own collection. Or if I'm like, no, 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 no. Está maravilloso. It is wonderful. I just wanna share it with my kids right now. I'm just gonna click on it. I can save it as an individual topic or I can add it into a group, right? Which is my learning community or my class and send it to my kids just with one click away. I froze my screen. I zoomed in too much and I can't freeze it. So I'm just gonna click refresh on this, but um, there exactly, go. there we go. <laughs> exactly what Belly said, add a topic and, and you just, you can use it. You can add it right away. I'm gonna go ahead and type in AMK. Here's my AMK PD topic. And you, you literally get that template right from yours and you can share it. So friends who are sharing, you have all of these options, just share it right to your community. And it's like getting the template right from Scholastic to bring into your classroom. So again, discovery, Belly, I was I was worried for a moment. I was like, I can't unshrink. <laughs> no worries, my friend. Oh my gosh. Um, and so scholastic friends, come right in here. Reading gives you superpowers. Kathy and Scott, you've been sharing so many creative ideas, but it's not only creating your own co your comic. Start your own story. Create a new character. Um, one of you mentioned the expressions, right? character expressions and understanding and empathizing with characters or people in the world around you or taking on a character's point of view or, or 
author's purpose, all of those things that we build into our teaching practices. So friends, we wanted to make sure you were aware of this particular collection right inside the Scholastic Partner page. And again, this is all just nestled inside your Flipgrid Educator account. Go to the partners, click on Scholastic, and you're gonna find these incredible resources for reading it gives you superpowers week. And again, you can always go right to Scholastic if you have any questions or sign up at our website, aka.ms slash Flipgrid events and register for the adventure on Monday. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and just bring Kathy and Scott back. Feli, do you wanna go ahead and wrap us up? This has been such an inspiring conversation. And I just want to add something really, really quick before we say adios. I just want to add with what Kathy said, right, that those read alouds. From a middle school perspective teacher, middle school students love read alouds. It does not mm -hmm. stop in elementary. It should continue in middle school. And going back to one of our comments from uh, Teaching with Miss T, she mentioned that she has the same activity, the Flash Flag Friday, with her high school students. Who I... Totally love that. Totally, totally love that. And with that in mind, we, I, we want to thank you for your time. We want to thank you for everything that you shared with us today. Everything that you're doing with your students, how you're empowering your students every single day to become amazing students, amazing readers, and acquiring the language. And, and most importantly, becoming amazing humans. Muchísimas gracias por todo. And Muchísimas gracias a nuestra comunidad, our community as well. Thank you so much. Okay. Kathy and Scott, any final thoughts to words of encouragement to our fellow educators who are empowering their readers and helping folks with new superpowers every day? Just remember to have fun with it and use those silly voices and put yourself out there. Be the weird teacher. <laughs> I, I completely agree. Be, be the weird teacher. Uh, take chances. If the students uh, see you taking chances, then they might be more willing to do the same. Um, also, on the event coming up uh, next week, it really is a great event uh, to help out readers. But also, if there's ever been anyone who thought, I can't write a comic, I can't write a book, um, the things that are talked about in, the, in that presentation that week, might really inspire some some people who didn't want to get started it might you know help them see that there could be other ways to uh to to make a difference and and start to write and and read more so, yeah okay. in, in my room i can't believe how excited they were that we got to be part of this and now kids that were saying i can't draw i can't i can't i can't when can we do more of this can we can i and they're doing it on their you know they've got recess and they're doing it at recess and they're taking books out at recess so, that's, that's so great. i just have to i just have to shout out to both of you it's so inspiring to to just hear you talk about what's happening in your classrooms but really truly bringing learning alive for your community and empowering your students the conversations i love this yes from our friend hi i love that kathy be the weird teacher right our friend annie is saying um, muchas gracias. And what about even celebrating with music and literacy and music go beautiful hand in hand. Sue, I love it. Have a great day on Friday. But I want to pop this up too. I know it's hiding you for a second, Scott, but a place in your classroom they, yeah, where your students are learning and thriving and reading. And this is just incredible. You inspire anyone who walks in and encourages you and reminds them to believe in themselves. And I think that's what I'm taking away from this conversation. The insights, the ideas that you've shared about what superpowers all of us as lifelong learners can get from reading. And I wanna say thank you. Feli has said thank you. I'm gonna echo her. Thank you to the community out there around the world tuning in all you are doing to empower your scholars, whether it's in reading a core content area and beyond. But Kathy and Scott, thank you so much. Thank you so, thank you. so much thank for you. joining in. And friends, one more time, I don't want you to miss out on this. Dave Pilkey is teaching us all on Monday how to create comics 
and we're going to have this awesome global classroom celebration. So definitely get connected, register for that. And with that, I think it's time to wrap. It's been so good. I could just keep on talking. <laughs> Friends, thank you. Have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a great last day, Scott. Thank you. We'll do our best. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.